Good day, Great Tools. Welcome to this first lesson in week 15. This week we'll be looking at rate of reactions and the extent of reaction. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the collision theory, and understanding the collision theory helps us understand how reactions occur. Now, the collision theory states a couple of things has to happen for a reaction to occur. The first thing is reacting atoms or ions or molecules must collide with each other. You cannot have a reaction unless the atoms, ions or molecules in the mixture actually collide with each other. Next, particles must have sufficient energy. So they have to collide and then they have to have sufficient energy. Thirdly, the particles must be correctly oriented. What do I mean by that? So say you've got a big dipole, yeah? And I tell you that that side there is slightly positive and this side is slightly negative. If another dipole had to come along and this side was also slightly negative and this side was slightly positive, then what would happen? Obviously, these two would repel each other and there wouldn't be a reaction. So in order for there to be a reaction, we need three things to happen. One, the particles, whether it be atoms, ions, or molecules, they must collide. Two, they must have sufficient energy. And three, they must be correctly oriented. And if all three of these, one, two, and three, if all of these three things occur, then we have what is called an effective collision an effective collision. And that's important because reactions don't occur unless we have what is called an effective collision. Now let's look at the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve. Now some textbooks call it the Boltzmann-Maxwell curve, whereas others call it the Maxwell-Boltzmann. It doesn't really matter. Basically, Mr. Maxwell and Mr. Boltzmann both came up together with this curve, which describes basically the energy per molecule versus the number of molecules in a container. So basically, it shows the amount of energy the molecules have. So if we look at this curve, we can see that there is a few number of particles that have got very little energy. We have got a large number of particles that have got an average amount of energy. And then these molecules, yeah, all of these molecules that are under this graph, these molecules have energy that is above what is called activation energy, the activation energy. And this is the minimum energy required for effective collision to occur and for a reaction to occur. So your activation energy is your minimum, minimum energy required for an effective collision and therefore reaction to occur. So remember what we said, three things, they have to collide, tick. So all of these particles over here are basically moving around and possibly colliding with other particles, but only these particles here, which are above this energy level, which is called the activation energy, will have enough energy for an effective collision to occur. So the only third thing that needs to happen is for them to have been correctly oriented. Right, grade 12, so that is the basics of the collision theory. Now we're going to look at these basics of collision theory and see how they apply to rates of reaction and extent of reaction.